Rhubarb is a funny vegetable. Apparently it just grows and grows and grows and it rains a lot in Ireland, therefore we have a lot of rhubarb. And I'm getting asked right and left from different neighbors of if I want a rhubarb. So I got a lot of rhubarb and I had to look up and find a few rhubarb recipes to get rid of all my rhubarb. So here we go. Here's today a vegan rhubarb cake that is so delicious that it will outshine all of its glutinous cousins and will fool anyone to think it's the real deal. a very good recipe online but it was not vegan so I'm gonna make some modifications to it and make this Rhabarber Kuchen vegan and if you like to learn more about gluten-free baked deliciousness make sure to subscribe to my channel and I have a book out it is on Kindle Unlimited and so it's free if you have that subscription and it's called gluten-free sugar gazel I think one reason why vegan baking is not as popular is the aftertaste of the milk substitutes. So last year I played and experimented a lot with different nut milks just to see which of the nut milks can I pass with non-vegans and make them think it's the real deal. I found one nut milk which gives me that nice milky flavor with not much aftertaste and that is macadamia nut. So for this recipe, I'm going to substitute milk for macadamia nut milk. And unfortunately, you can't buy it in the store. And if you can, it probably has a few other chemicals in it and leaves a lot of after flavor. So I'm going to make my own macadamia nut milk. And it's actually pretty simple to do. To make my own macadamia nut milk, I need to measure two cups of hot boiling water. And then I'm going to add to the boiling hot water 100 grams of macadamia nut. I'm going to let the hot water and the macadamia nut sit now for 30 minutes and let the water get soaked up by the macadamia nut. I'm going to get started of making the crumbs, which I'm going to use as the topping for my cake. Measure 70 grams of brown sugar, add a pinch of salt, and I'm going to add 120 grams of the same tart flour combination. And I'm gonna add 70 gram of vegan butter substitute. And with a fork, I'm gonna break down the butter a little bit and create some crumbs. Sometimes I use my hand to help it out a little bit. And here are the crumbs which I'll use for the topping of my cake. I'm gonna have to prep my rhubarb now and I'm gonna cut it in one centimeter by one centimeter cubes. And I want to cut about one kilo of rhubarb. So I'm going to set the rhubarb aside and start making my pudding. And for that, I'm going to grind my soaked macadamia nut and make some fresh macadamia nut milk. I'm going to quick blend the macadamia nut and the hot milk. And then I'm going to strain the nut milk with a nut milk bag. I'm going to press with my hand the rest of the milk out. Here is the freshly squeezed macadamia nut milk. So I'm going to cook in now the rhubarb and I added certainly all my rhubarb to the pot for that. And I added 100 grams of raspberries and those raspberries are going to cook in as well and create this really nice rich red color for the cake. I'm also going to add 100 grams of sugar or a little bit more. And I'm also going to add now my macadamia nut milk to the strawberries and the rhubarb. And I'm just going to put a lid on the pot just to cook in the rhubarb faster. I kept about a quarter cup of macadamia nut milk and I'm going to use that with my cornstarch to thicken up the filling. And for that, I have to add four tablespoons of cornstarch. You can also substitute the cornstarch with four tablespoons of potato starch. Just keep in mind the filling will be a little bit gooier. So I'm going to steer the rhubarb, checking in how much it has cooked in. And you can see how the raspberries add this really nice, rich, red, pinkish color, which was a really good trick from the recipe. And I pasted the original recipe link below in the description. So the rhubarb is getting soft now, and I'm going to add now my cornstarch. 
and you can see how the corn starch is thickening up the filling. The filling should be very thick and you feel a bit of resistance. Then that's the right consistency. So I'm going to add now a little bit of vanilla extract. Um, I'm going to use about one tablespoon and I'm going to set the filling aside and let it cool down. I have some frozen tart crust which I certainly defrosted and I'm going to use that for my cake crust. Uh, the recipe how to make a tart crust is in my channel and I'm also showing how to make a vegan tart crust next week. To roll out my cake I'm going to line my cake pan and then I'm going to take out the cake liner and roll out the tart crust on this liner just to make sure I have enough dough. And then I'm going to transfer the liner to the cake pan and with my hands going to press in the dough into the edges of the cake pan. For the rim, I'm going to take some of the tart crust, roll it out. I'm going to squeeze the dough a little bit as well to get a little bit more height going. And then I'm going to press the rolled out tart crust edges into the pan. I'm going to trim the excess dough with a knife. I'm going to stab the middle of the cake with a fork just to make sure the air can easily release. So here's my tart crust and I'm going to add the filling now to it. Here you go. So the last thing to do is to add the crumbs. So it's time to put the cake into the oven for about 50 minutes at 325 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 180 degrees Celsius. So here's the cake. I let it sit overnight just to make sure the cornstarch can congeliate because before that it was pretty liquid and certainly you can't cut into a liquid cake. So yeah, I had to wait overnight. So I'm going to release it now from the form. Ah. This is a trickier cake to transfer because it's pretty heavy with the filling. So I'm going to put a cake bottom underneath it to support the cake a bit more in the transfer. And certainly I'm going to try out how the cake turned out. Mm. It has the sweetness combined with the puckeriness, with the puckeriness of the rhubarb, with a little bit of the lemon and the raspberry flavor. Anybody who loves lemon would love this cake as well. I think the only thing what I would add, which I normally would add, is some whipped cream. I hope you enjoyed today's show, and if you did, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and check the bell to get notifications about any upcoming videos. And if you have any comments, feedback, ideas which I can try out, please make sure to add them below in the comment box. And I see you next week. Bye!